Hello on the person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a resolution to a relatively old mystery of the center of the nearby galaxy known as Andromeda. Because for many years now, scientists knew that there was an unusual shape right in the center of the Andromeda that was somewhat difficult to explain. And that's of course until now. The recent study seems to do a pretty good job at explaining exactly why this unusual shape was formed and how this might affect other galaxies as well. But I guess let's start with the mystery itself. What is this shape and what exactly are we talking about? So essentially for decades now, the scientists were aware of this unusual mystery right in the middle of the Andromeda. And this mystery began back in the 70s when the scientists launched a weather balloon with an ultraviolet telescope attached to the balloon in order to investigate the center of the Andromeda galaxy in more detail. And these initial discoveries are sort of visible as this tiny blue spot right here and some of these other spots you see in this relatively old image created by NASA. But then some of the follow-up images taken by the iconic Hubble telescope once it became operational revealed something else around this shape. Here's by the way what these images looked like back in the days. They revealed this somewhat elongated shape that's also to some extent visible right here and that's basically simulated to look kind of like this. There's an ultraviolet patch in the middle, somewhat oval in shape, and then there's a ring-like formation that seems to be more oval than circular in shape. And this presented a somewhat unusual mystery because, for the most part, when the scientists just looked at this, they expected something entirely different. For example, by looking in the center of our own galaxy, we expect a somewhat more circular or somewhat more spherical formations. Now obviously some orbits of some stars will be more elongated, but overall, on average, it should still be somewhat spherical or at least somewhat symmetrical in shape. Having something sticking out like an oval shape would be very very difficult to explain, at least initially. And that's especially because overall we believe Andromeda to be somewhat similar to the Milky Way. So we kind of think that whatever happens in the Andromeda most likely also happens in the Milky Way. But the Milky Way galaxy in the center doesn't seem to have any of these unusual stretched formations or oval-like shapes. In the Milky Way, it does seem to be more or less symmetrical or more or less spherical. And so how exactly did something like this form and also what exactly is this? And so in order to explain this lack of symmetry, the scientists had to start approaching this from a different perspective. From a perspective of what we know about black holes and of course black hole collisions. And that's because we know that just like in the Milky Way galaxy, Andromeda galaxy also has a relatively massive central black hole right in the middle. But we also know that, generally speaking, black holes tend to also collide. And when they collide, they produce a lot of gravitational waves. And these waves, as they spread across spacetime, do have certain types of influence on some of these objects. But in general, scientists believe that these uh, waves right here would not really affect a lot of the stars in the vicinity, even if these black holes were massive. However, the waves do affect the black holes themselves, and the final collision here also has a tremendous impact on the final product. This final black hole, when it's produced, most likely experiences a tremendous kick from all of the force generated during such a black hole merger. And so here's what the scientists believe might have happened here, and here's how they explain all of this. So first of all, this whole disk right here today is referred to as the eccentric nuclear disk. And eccentric in this case refers to the eccentricity of the orbits, they're more oval shaped. Then this blue light that you see right here represents a lot of blue stars that were created relatively recently, most likely around 200 million years ago during some sort of a major burst. There are approximately 400 stars in that region and they're all moving relatively fast. But surprisingly they're all moving in a somewhat oval shape, suggesting that a lot of these stars were created from a lot of the material moving in a similar oval shape. Which of course implies that a lot of the stars and a lot of the material around the central black hole in the Andromeda is not moving in a circular way or in a symmetric way like in the Milky Way or some of the other galaxies explored so far. And is instead moving in that pancake shape, the eccentric oval orbit that I showed you previously. But how exactly could this be connected to the central black hole or to its previous collisions? Well in this case the scientists decided to explore this by using various n-body simulations and the main idea here was exploring the gravitational waves and their influence for all of the material on all of the stars in approximately 3 to 4 light years away from the center. And actually one of the other simulations I mentioned in one of the previous videos even allowed us to see how a lot of these central black holes might affect a lot of the stars in the material right in the center as they orbit around this area. 
Notice how this black hole right here is actually pulling and sort of dragging along a lot of the stars and a lot of the material right in its vicinity. And it's also not really in the center at all. But it does produce somewhat symmetrical shapes though. So something a little bit different was probably happening in the Andromeda. And the way the scientists approach this is by exploring the idea of the force that's produced when the black holes collide with one another. When two massive black holes are about to collide, they will generally produce a tremendous amount of force generated by the merger itself. And this force produced by the huge amount of gravitational waves that's essentially sort of like a tsunami of waves coming right from the center of this collision will carry a tremendous amount of momentum away from the central collision. With this sort of acting as a recoil, being so powerful as a matter of fact, that as it spreads it could affect a lot of the other stars even farther away from the center. And obviously the more massive the black hole or the black holes colliding, the more powerful the recoil they produce. And so for this particular study, they build a lot of different fake galactic models containing hundreds of different stars orbiting around the binary black holes as they're about to collide and as they're about to create this recoil from the gravitational waves. And in pretty much every single case, this final recoil either completely kicked out the final black hole from the galaxy, or in some cases would make it move around in very unusual shapes, which would then affect a lot of the stars that were in the vicinity as well. Now if the black hole gets kicked out, you might end up with something like the triangular galaxy you see right here, that's the other really massive galaxy in the vicinity, and in this case there seems to be no black hole in the center. So this is one potential explanation. During the black hole collision, the final product probably just got kicked out and is traveling somewhere in the intergalactic space. For the Andromeda though, the story seems to be a little bit different. The final collision gave the black hole just enough speed to produce these oval shapes that we now observe as these unusual prolonged orbits that have been discovered a few decades ago. And so the major discovery from this paper suggests that when these black holes don't escape the galaxy, they end up creating unusual shapes in the center, especially when the original black holes colliding are relatively massive and relatively similar in mass and size. But obviously if one of the black holes is much smaller, it's not going to produce just as much momentum and will probably have almost no effect. So this only seems to affect the galaxies when the two black holes are relatively similar in size and in mass, or possibly share some other properties. This is obviously not something we know just yet. But more importantly, the scientists in the study were able to recreate relatively similar oval shapes through their simulations and their modeling as well. So in other words, it definitely explains what we are observing in the Andromeda pretty well, once and for all solving that mystery. And at the same time, it might also solve another mystery, the mystery of black holes colliding. Even today, the scientists are still not entirely certain if supermassive black holes can actually collide. Today this is referred to as the final parsec problem and we've discussed this in one of the previous videos. In a nutshell though, it basically means that at some point, the two supermassive black holes can actually get stuck around one another and never really come close to each other. And so theoretically, for supermassive black holes to collide, something extraordinary must happen. But clearly these observations from the study and also from the Andromeda galaxy suggest otherwise. They do suggest that black holes, supermassive black holes, definitely collide and we see the signs of this in the Andromeda galaxy. And so instead of solving one mystery, the scientists in this paper might have actually solved two. But obviously this is just a preliminary result and follow-up studies need to determine if this is exactly what happened here. At the moment though, it definitely looks like this is a solution to that old problem of the unusual oval orbits right in the middle of the Andromeda galaxy. Although I guess the next question is, so how come the Milky Way doesn't have this? and a lot of other galaxies, like the Triangulum or some of the other nearby galaxies where we did get to study the center in detail. And so in this case, I guess the question is, how exactly the black hole in the Milky Way galaxy, the black hole known as the Sagittarius A star, grew and became so massive over time? If it also experienced collisions, how come it didn't really produce these oval shapes or get kicked out of the galaxy? So maybe some of the future studies will be able to answer this as well. Until then, thank you for watching, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.